Can you explain what is Bitcoin maximalism? Bitcoin's technology, but underneath that technology is an idea about politics. I mean, a lot of technologists have this strong libertarian streak. They believe that technology will free us from the need for government to do things for us. And uh, Bitcoin takes that into the realm of money. The belief is that if you have cash settlement using something scarce, and that is peer to peer, you can take the government out of a lot of what previously it was doing, a belief you might be able to get rid of debt and get rid of banks and that there's going be a whole revolution and you know the world will just be a shiny and very different place tomorrow and that's kind of where bitcoin maximals are right they believe that this technology is going to completely transform the world of money and they believe the world of money is foundational to all of society and that's going to lead to the end of governments etc as a result they believe that bitcoin is very very valuable it's valuable as a social project and they believe it is morally good and many of them believe that it is a source of scarcity that will behave much better than what they believe governments will do with what they call fiat money, which is they will debase it. Uh, because usually the, the costs of things tend to go up in nominal terms over time, right? The cost of like that, that cup of coffee that you were just drinking from, right? And the coffee that you buy. You would reasonably expect that in a few years, the cost of that same pound of coffee is going to be higher in dollars. And that's called, uh, that's called inflation, right? And which is actually saying that the value of the dollar in terms of purchasing power is going to go down. There's a belief in Bitcoin people that because Bitcoin is going to have a maximum number of Bitcoin, that eventually they will stop minting more Bitcoin, that this means it will not have inflation. Uh, and that means it will increase in value relative to fiat currency. Uh, and again, fiat currency will go the way of, you know, Armageddon and, you know, the only real money will be the Bitcoin money. And this is why people talk about it going to the moon is belief that the because currency keeps on going down, that even if Bitcoin stays flat, it just keeps on appreciating relative to that. And so the um, the belief is that that's going to be a source not only of, you know, the morally better future for all mankind, uh, but also that's going to be a source of, of big wealth. Uh, and the fact that this is built in, that idea of non-inflation is built into the Bitcoin code and is not built into other cryptocurrency codes, right? Like th th there is no maximum number of ETH. It's growing slowly. Um, probably slower than the uh, nominal uh, inflation of like the US dollar, but there's no, no logical cap to it because people can agree to it. And if you're finding this video useful, then go ahead and click that like button. Thank you. Just to linger on that point, yeah. can you explain the utility of a level of inflation? Because there is a purpose to for currencies to inflate. Right. I mean, you want to incent people to do things today instead of doing things tomorrow. I think it's called the problem of thrift. And the gist is if the currency is going to be worth more tomorrow than it is today, you've incented everyone to hold on to it and not spend it. Exactly. Right. So the, the economy moves when people spend money, which puts money in the hand and into, into people's pockets for doing jobs. And then, you know, they're able to go spend it on other things and everything just sort of keeps on moving around. And, and a bit of inflation is good for that because it incentivizes people to spend today instead of hanging on to their money, to your point, and spending it tomorrow. An economic good thing, like all good things, it's good in moderation, right? So that's incentivizing people to do things today. But if you have too quick a debasement of the currency, the um, you know money becomes a lot less valuable and people can't depend on it as part of a whole financial system. So it's the, the you want to have a little bit, but not too much of it. Bitcoin people feel very differently about this. They believe that, you know, it's kind of like the supply of gold. There's only so much gold in the world. Uh, and they think of their Bitcoin as that digital gold and they're mining for that digital gold until all that digital gold has been mined and now it's all in the world. That's sort of the, the parallel that they've got. And people who believe in a certain kind of what's called hard money uh, believe that, that finite supply is a better way of managing one's finances. And certainly it's true that if you're hanging on to something that is finite, if you have finite supply in a world of infinitely growing demand, then that supply will appreciate in value in general. So here's the tricky part. The theory that, you know, just laid out of like, you know, Bitcoin not having inflation and therefore should always appreciate relative to underlying currency, that's not the way it's worked out. The way it actually works out is that Bitcoin is has a high degree of volatility uh, because even though it's scarce, it doesn't necessarily matter. So there's a lot of how much people are in into Bitcoin as being the big driver of its value. So it's not about like the, the changes in its supply, it's about these wildly gyrating changes in demand for Bitcoin in particular.
particular as a risky asset. Uh, and so the, the real value of Bitcoin moves kind of with these other cryptocurrencies, which sort of goes against the whole Bitcoin maxi versus being just a crypto maxi. Uh, and uh, it also goes against the story of it being an inflation hedge, because when inflation increased in the United States, you should have reasonably expected that Bitcoin would go up as a result of that inflation. But that's not what happened. What happened instead was the inflation corresponded with uh, people being concerned about economic conditions. This led to a flight to quality. And Bitcoin is many things, but it's not at that end of the flight to quality. So people were fleeing Bitcoin. This causes Bitcoin to fall. This decrease in demand for Bitcoin causes uh, Bitcoin, of course, to, to fall in price and also causes lots of businesses that depend on Bitcoin to succeed to also fall in price. Uh, businesses like you know Coinbase, uh, which has seen its stock price plummet uh, in the course of the last, uh, last six months. As always, if you want to stay apprised of the latest around emerging tech, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thanks.